Good morning folks, Drew's Farm and Life is back again today I'm hoping the wind doesn't bother me too much here, but it might be But I've got my back to the wind so it might be shelter in the camera, I'm not sure But I'm on my way up here to cut some of the zero grazing I can't believe we're still cutting and lifting in October uh, <laughs> yeah. Despite the weather, it's been very wet, so it's been quite dodgy, but we're up in this flat field here up the top of the hill. We've only got another few runs to cut up here, and then we might be back down into that field there. Out of the wind now, so aye, trying to keep cutting up here. I'm going to cut the majority of this, or if not all of it, and uh, leave it lying and lift it. And it'll be going to the kind of the bollocks that are in at the moment, and then I'll keep the fresher stuff for the main lot. I'm trying to keep it as fresh as possible. But I know it's it's a beautiful day at the moment, but it was absolutely terrible earlier. It was raining like hell. Uh, the weather's it's just it just won't decide what to do. I'm not getting any dry days in a row. You know it's. Uh, it's getting too late to be putting the grass seed in, but I think Dad still wants to try it, but it's getting to that time of year, if you put it in it might wash away, so I, think, I don't know, we'll just need to see what happens. Weather pending, but weather at the moment isn't looking like it's going to be playing ball, so aye. So I was hoping to do that, he's not keen to put in any winter barley this year, so that's that's off the cards for this year, so everything's going to go into spring barley. Next year, so I'll have a very busy spring. Plowing, seeding and uh, slurry spreading. I'll have a lot going on in the spring because we've not done any winter barley. Uh, bye. I'll horse through that with a big uh, five furrow plow that we've got. So love that plow, you can blitz a place with it. <laughs> so, right, no, I'm gonna finish kind of cutting up here. The grass is uh, not got as much quality in it at the moment as it first did, so the milk's kind of going down a little bit, but that's because this grass is getting old, whereas the stuff down below where I want to get to uh, it should be quite fresh, it's shorter, not as thick, so it'll not be very heavy, you'll need to cut a lot more, but the nutrients should be there that will boost the milk again, so, but we'll see. Weather's going to depend on whether or not we actually get to do that or not, because, well, that's on the hill, that field. <laughs> so, yeah, aye. Just a bit of a ball up. Uh, the next issue is we've got fields that have got grass in them and uh, we're not putting it in the pit unless the weather changes drastically so that we can really get it going and get it in the pit kind of dry without the effluent running out the front of it. So it's either that or we kind of fence things off and get the cattle home from the rented ground and stow everywhere like that and try and jump it down that way. <laughs> ah, it's a very strange year, so it has been a very strange year. Yeah. Aye, I'll chap on the new here, hang on. Aye, no, the, this grass would actually probably make quite good silage, but, you know, none of it's shot, but get to that point in that time of year, I don't really know, There's just, it's not got the same move. but that fresher growing stuff down there should be better for the cows, but as I said before, it's about trying to get it lifted with it being on a hill, it's uh, a wee bit dodgy. <laughs> the wind's really picked up now, uh, very windy day today. So I've, I've just decked a lot, uh, probably shouldn't have, but it's just going to Youngstock 
well, some of it will be going to the main lot tomorrow, but fresh stuff will get cut tomorrow and then I'll need to come back up here to cut any. The young stock will munch away at it when we bring it into them. Then I can get into the better stuff for the main lot. It is a beautiful day, but it just started it just started spitting there as I was climbing into this tractor. Good old TM140. I know it started spitting with rain there just as I was moving over into this tractor. So hopefully that's not a sign of it to start raining later on the day. Just kind of wanting it to dry out a bit, but it's not happening. But I could really do with getting some slurry out before the winter really sets in, but we can't because the ground's too wet to go out with a tanker. <laughs> and the grass is too long elsewhere to spread it anyway, so kind of need to try and lift all the grass everywhere, but we can't because these are the driest fields, everywhere else is so. Sure, everyone else is in the same kind of boat. Heard of some folk with still about a hundred acre of winter barley to go in and whatnot. It's, but we're not doing it this year because it doesn't work the best up here. Uh, just because of if it rains heavy, we lose our soil, and we kind of need that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm now back down in the field that we're hoping to cut next. Um, that's what we've got left, that strip in the middle there. But it just got far too wet to go up and down the hill. So, went up to a flatter field and if it comes dry we'll get to that. But ideally I think it'll be going to young stock because I think we should start cutting round the heat rigs and back into the middle of the field again if we can. Because this will be the best stuff for the cows. It's quite a hassle all this, eh? <laughs> they eat better if it was dry, but it's not. <laughs> right, so that's the grass work done for today. Um, earlier on I hosed this bucket out after mucking out and I've spotted a couple of holes. So I've found this off cut of metal here weld over the holes, the cracks, and uh, that should keep that good before it starts to damage itself further. It's just getting thinner with age. Uh, did a bit of bother with that corner a wee while back, but we've sorted it. So just to kind of sort this out, this is a base plate that's under there, there's some squares underneath. Uh, the wear plates for underneath, so I know that that's a good bit to weld onto. So it's just the bits around the, the square plate that are buggering up, to be honest. So I'll put this over the top in the right place, weld it up. She should be good for another while. <laughs> Aye. I nearly started welding with the normal goggles on. 
I was like, <laughs> I thought my vision's looking pretty good here. <laughs> fud. What a fud. Look at the actual welding mask. And I'll not blind myself. Sake. Oh, fanny man. Jesus. <laughs> I would just like to pre-warn the viewers that I'm about to flash you but not in the way that you want me to <laughs> Right, let's get welding First run. Need to change my rod. Put the rod in the hole and get going again. I've lost my chipper, so I'm using a chisel here instead. Fuses went. Look at it. Ah. On board though. The extension of that. Aye. See how that the powers went out to the farm. Nah, I can hear the air compressor in the parlour going. Right. plug in here and I'll know which ones went Than I thought I would. Hi, good.
pretty decent. And I'm happy with that anyway. That was a bit more awkward because it was a new rod. Just for being up there. But got it, so that's that fixed. So. Stiff on the legs, that. Keep me flexible. Keep me well stretched. <laughs> that's awfully good, right? Put all this away and then we'll see how well penetrated it is at the back of it. I think she owns the place sitting in my chair. She will be bored though, eh? Can't risk her walking about just because she's close because we're close to the main road, you know. So don't, don't want to risk her getting hit, so I try and Keep her where I know she is, unless I'm walking about. There we go, fantastic. Let's see all the holes coming through here. Right, that should hopefully increase the longevity of this bucket. Hopefully. Aye, very good. So hopefully you all enjoyed today's video. I'll see you all next time with something else, surely. <laughs> Cheers guys.